Welcome to our final uh, session of our first workshop on mediation and moderation. This final session, session number five, is on moderation. Up to now, we've been talking about uh, mediation. So we covered uh, mediation, parallel mediation, serial mediation. Now we switch gears and start talking about moderation. And this is the agenda for today. First of all, what is moderation? And how can we conduct a moderation analysis in a sophisticated way? Okay, so how we do this? How can we find results for our moderation models that we are theoretically developing um, through literature reveals and through all the conversations you have potentially with faculty, with friends? Um, we'll get there. We'll get there. So first, what is moderation? So when we are talking about moderation, we are looking at the circumstances or when or where our independent variable influences our de dependent variable. We are looking at a moderator, a variable that alters, that changes the strength or the direction of the relationship between our independent variable and our dependent variable. Job meaningfulness, does it always influence job performance? When is this relationship stronger? When is this relationship significant? Perhaps if you have different levels of organizational identification, the relationship between your job meaningfulness and the job performance could change. Those are the type of questions that we are looking at when we are testing moderator or moderation models or adding a moderator to your model. And this is the graphical representation that you usually have when testing uh, for moderators. So we have a main effect, the independent variable influencing the dependent variable, but that relationship is a function of a particular moderator. It can change based on the level of the moderator. How do we test for a moderator or for moderation, moderation models? Um, it's pretty simple, again. We have a series of steps. So first, in step one, you have, your, uh, you have to mean center your independent variable and your moderator, especially if they are continuous variables. If they are categorical, like gender, you don't need it to, to center the moderator usually the moderator would be the gender. Um, but if there are continuous variables, like job meaningfulness or, um, or organization identification, yes, you have to center. And the reason is we needed to avoid multicollinearity issues. Uh, the way that we create a moderator variable is by multiplying your independent variable and the moderator. You create an interaction term. And when you do that, the correlations tended to be really high. So to avoid multi multicollinearity issues, you needed to mean center your independent variable and your moderator. In step two, you run a regression in which you have your independent variable and your moderator, and also the dependent variable. In step three, you add the interaction term. So now you have your independent variable, your moderator, and the interaction term, which is the multiplication of your independent variable and your moderator. And also, you have your dependent variable. So next, you do a simple slope analysis. And this is questionable because some scholars have brought to light, actually, that the purpose of a moderating model is not to show that the slopes at the different levels of the moderator are significant. The purpose of a moderating analysis is to see if the effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable change based on the level of the moderator. Finally, we needed to plot. And the reason is we needed to take a look at the pattern of these relationships. So it helps us to understand and interpret these moderating effects. Uh, I usually adopt a Excel spreadsheet that you can download from the Jeremy Dawson 
website. It's pretty cool, it's pretty neat. Um, you just have to enter the coefficients in this spreadsheet and it will give you the graphical representation of your interaction. On top of that, you can also do simple slope analysis um, by using this spreadsheet. I would strongly recommend you to download this uh, spreadsheet. So for this uh, session, we'll be testing a model in which we argue, we theorize that the relationship between meaningfulness and performance is a function of organizational identification. Perhaps if you have high levels of organization identification, if you're highly identified with your organization, the relationship between job meaningfulness and performance will be stronger. So if you have low levels of job identification, perhaps the relationship between meaningfulness and performance is no or weaker than when you have high levels of organization identification. We are adopting SPSS and the macro developed by Hayes, the process macro. So if you click on analyze, go to regression among all these options that you have here, uh, go to regression. And then when you, you click on regression, uh, you have the process option. You are not doing a linear regression model. You are not doing an ordinal regression model. You are using a, the process macro developed by Hayes. What's important, again, and you should know that now, is the choice of the model. For moderators, for moderating models, we are adopting number one, model number one, not number, model number four for uh, mediation or not number six for zero mediation. Now we are adopting number one. Um, our dependent variable is our performance uh, measure. Our independent variable is job meaningfulness. And our moderator is organization identification. You'll notice that we added the moderator in the same place that we added our mediator. But SPSS will know that this is a moderator because we chose model number one. Uh, the variables down here, proposed moderator, moderator W or Z or V or Q, they are used when we are conducting conditional indirect effects. And this is the topic of our next workshop. We'll be talking about conditional indirect effects and you will learn to use those uh, options here in our next workshop. So what you do next to test for moderator, for, for moderating models? Next, click on options. Remember, we needed to mean center our variables. And uh, SPSS process model does that for you, which is fantastic. Helps us or uh, uh, makes this test more easy. One last step that we needed to do by hand. So just click on that mean centering uh, for products. Uh, and then I strongly recommend you to also select print model coefficient covariance matrix, because we will need that matrix to do the simple slope analysis. And there we go. If we do that, click on OK, and then you have the output file. Um, again, double check if you got the right model, model number one. Yay, we can move. And then we have the variables here. Perfect. They are all there. Uh, let's look at the coefficients now. Um, so in our um, moderation models, uh, we needed to look at the effects of the interaction term. In this case, we have an interaction term that is significant. So the relationship between the interaction term and our dependent variable here, performance, is significant. P is less than 0.05. And the second thing that you look at your output file is the covariance table. Yeah, you do have the covariance table here. Remember that the covariance of the covariance is the variance. Keep in mind that uh, language because we'll need those coefficients when plotting uh, our interaction graph and getting the simple slope analysis. How do we know that this is the right interaction, right multiplication term? We look here, you see? So here our int1, interaction1, is 
the multiplication of job meaningfulness and organization identification. Um, finally, you can look at the change in R square when we add the interaction term. And here we see that the change in R square, the explained variance, is significant. And that's important as well. You need to report that when you are reporting the findings of a moderation model. Finally, the last part of the output that you look at is this um, set of variables or set of coefficients um, that shows show you, or the set shows you that the relationship is significant for high or low levels of the ED of the moderator. Uh, at this point here, we look at the mean levels of the moderator, and we find that at mean levels of the moderator, zero is in the confidence interval. So that effect is not significant. But when you're high in organization identification, we find that the, uh, uh, this, the direct effect of job meaningfulness on job performance is significant. There is no zero there. But if you are low in organization identification, Zero is in the confidence interval. So you don't find a significant direct effect of job meaningfulness on performance for those individuals who are low on organization identification. This last part of the output, I usually don't use them, uh, these coefficients. I prefer going to the uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, because it will give you a more, uh, I would say, uh, an easier way to plot your interactions. And that's how we do. Go to the Jeremy Dawson website and download the two-way unstandardized with simple slope files. Yes, in this uh, description here, you'll find one of the, uh, one of the files that I'm just uh, asking you to download. It's easier, you'll see uh, in a bit that this is a very easy process to uh, plot your interaction. So once you download that the, and open uh, the Excel spreadsheet, this is what you see. Okay. Um, you have a bunch of coefficients that you needed to enter in order to get your graphical representation here. And let's do that. Yes, of course. So first, you needed to go to the descriptives. So again, you go to analyze. Every time that you needed to analyze anything uh, on SPSS, you go to the analyze tab. And now you go to descriptives or descriptive statistics. And then descriptives. You have frequencies, explore, cross tab. Nope. Go to descriptives. And then you, and then you select the two variables that you want um, the descriptives, the mean and the standard deviation, job meaningfulness, and uh, organization identification. You got the output. You have the mean here, and you have the standard deviations there. You need those coefficients when you are entering the information in your Excel spreadsheet, sp spreadsheet to plot your interactions. You will also need this covariance uh, table here, because you'll be looking at uh, covariance and variance coefficients. Now, you needed to enter those coefficients. You enter the coefficient of your independent variable, you enter the coefficient of your moderator, the interaction term, the uh, constant or intercept, um, and now you add the um, means and standard deviations. What's important here is because you centered, you mean centered your uh, variables, your mean should be zero, okay, for both independent variable and moderator, and now you have your standard deviations. Finally, you go back to that covariance and variance matrix and get the coefficients and just enter those coefficients here. Um, because our standard deviation of our moderator is 1.16, 1.16. That's the value that you want to enter when comparing the slopes. Okay? One standard deviation above, 1.116, and one standard deviation below, minus 1.16. Uh, 
uh, our sample size here it was a, a thousand and we have no controls variables in this uh, in this test so once you enter that this is the um, graph that you will be seeing okay uh, and here what you have is that for uh, values or for individuals who are one standard deviation above the mean for individuals high in organization identification this slope here is significant p is less than 0.05 but for those individuals who are low on organization identification uh, the standard deviation is minus 1.16 we see that the p value here is not less than 0.05 and this line this slope is not significantly different from zero so for individuals high on organization identification yes that slope is significant for individuals low in organization identification that slope is basically flat not different from zero uh, and this is um, replicating basically the findings that we got from the SPSS output for individuals high in organization identification we see here that there is no zero in the confidence interval so that relationship is significant for individuals high in organization identification the relationship between job meaningfulness and job performance is significant but for individuals low on organization identification that relationship is not significant so this is the end of our first workshop in this session particularly we talked about moderation and we presented what moderation is we explained what moderation does how to conduct a moderation test uh, the importance of plotting um, so this is the end of this session in this workshop we covered uh, a number of, e of analytical processes we covered mediation we covered parallel mediation we covered serial mediation and we also covered moderation in our next workshop we'll be talking about conditional indirect effects if you want to learn more please follow uh, the links and watch the next or the second workshop on conditional indirect effects thank you